Hello, welcome to Messing About with Models. Today I'm going to show you weathering a brake van. This is a basic Hornby model, um, as you can see, uh, straight out of the box. And we're going to make that look a little bit more careworn and as if it's in actual service. First job is to pick out the handrails with a little bit of white paint. Um, just to sort of highlight those areas, even though that they'll probably end up uh, being a lot dirtier and a lot less pristine white, we'll, uh, we'll start off that way and then cover them up with uh, some weathering uh, as we go. The trick here is to um, just use the side of your brush and just sort of sweep it along uh, the handrail. Um, this uh, allows you to give a just enough just to cover the top surface of the moulded handrail um, and prevents you from getting the paint everywhere which is what I did uh, on one of these uh, you'll see in a minute Right, once we've done that, uh, just a quick cover with some uh, matte varnish from an aerosol can. Um, just to give something for the um, weathering paints and powders to uh, adhere to. First we're going to start off with uh, a sort of a dark grey uh, paint. Uh, this is actually my weathered black that I'm using here and um, that's because it is really a shade of grey. And we're just going to dab it into the sort of corners, um, especially from the top where dirt would have collected and the rain would have washed it down. All the time here we're working up and down strokes to sort of simulate the effect of, of rain streaking this down. And at this stage we probably aren't going to be too particular about where it goes. Um, we're just going to make sure that we've got a reasonable amount in, in all the little corners and uh, underneath all the handrails and any sort of elements of relief. Make sure we get uh, a fair bit of that paint up in up in all the corners, areas where the dirt would congregate. Need to remember at this time um, the railways were still uh, full of steam engines, so there'd be lots of coal dust uh, and just general black dirtiness and sootiness in the atmosphere and this would have got everywhere and the rain would have streaked it down the sides of, of wagons and vans coaches even the difference is that coaches would often get a um, wash in the carriage washing plant no one ever washed down um, goods wagons so once we've got plenty of, uh, of the dark grey on there we're just going to wipe some of it off using a cotton wool bud. Again, vertical strokes just to sort of soak up, especially in the middle of these large panels, just leaving the paint in the uh, grooves, the vertical grooves, which represent the gaps between planks in the side of the brake van. Again, just getting a little bit on the, the, on the top of the where the roof meets the sides 
uh, as an area where you know, the, the dirt would have gathered together. Now I'm using a stiff brush to sort of drag the paint off uh, of the model, just leaving it almost like a dry brushing technique, um, just to drag the paint um, through everything and again just trying to give that streaked, dirty sort of look rather than it just being a, a thick blob of paint. Just really want the sort of the, the thin uh, appearance of, of dirt on there rather than uh, thick black clumpy clods. Again, concentrating on those areas <coughs> where there's a large surface area where the rain would have had a, a better chance of, of washing off dirt and having it catch in all the sort of nooks and crannies. And again, once we've put some paint on, we take some paint off, just leaving a little bit behind. Now, once we've done that, it's time to start on the chassis. And here I'm dry brushing with some light brown paint, simulating that sort of dirt thrown up from the rails, from the track, uh, mud, etc. Again, putting a little bit of paint on the brush and then wiping almost all of it off the on the tissue and then just brushing it across the, the chassis and the sole bar there, just giving the impression of sort of dirt um, and grime that's sort of come up from that track area. Again a combination of putting some paint on and then taking most of it off again just to sort of leave the the sort of bare minimum of paint. Having that to pick out the various uh, details, the springs, brake hangers, etc. underneath the, the chassis. And of course, some of that uh, dust and dirt would have would have got up above the sole bar and flaked up onto the body sides and onto the footboards and so on, so that they would uh, you'd, you'd see that um, everywhere. But obviously, slightly fainter further up you go. So this is this is an up up and down motion in reverse, if you like. That's the sort of dirt that's flung up from the track. And hits that area. Don't worry about uh, putting too much paint on at this stage um, because the, the great thing about acrylics is you can always remove the paint with a little bit of water, um, either a bit of water on a brush or, as I've done on some of the sides, using a cotton wool bud. And here I'm putting a little bit of light rust paint around the guards ducats which are the, the metal sort of windows which stick out um, and so a little bit around there just to sort of pick out some of the details because on although this is a railroad edition 
um, brake van, there's still uh, you can still see the sort of rivets around things like the uh, guards ducket there. And now we're going to move on to the roof, which we haven't used any paint on, but we're just going to treat that with some weathering powders. So here's some <clears throat> black weathering powder, uh, black soot, again just trying to replicate the, all the soot, soot and grime uh, that would have been around uh, in steam days. And again sort of making sure that the strokes are from side to side here as the rain would have dragged it down, uh, especially over those rain strips uh, there as well. And just making it look pretty uh, pretty grotty and um, dirty and sooty up there. Not forgetting of course that um, the guard's van had a, a stove and a little chimney there so there would have been something coming out of there as well. Now I'm going to add some light rust weathering powders to the, the metal areas here. So we're going to put a little bit uh, on each of the ventilators, again sort of just gently sort of streaking it from side to side and again from the chimney. It might look like a lot and it might look <clears throat> a bit too powdered at this stage, but we're going to brush that in um, and it will tone itself down. And again, using the rust weathering powders on the chassis, uh, touching up the springs um, on the wheels, around the buffers, all the area where there was a bit of exposed metal uh, would have eventually got rusty. Uh, after all, it rains a lot in Britain. And these things weren't kept under cover, they were out in all weathers. So again, just trying to gently uh, hint at that sort of rusty streakiness coming off of those. Right on the footboards as well. And the reason I've got that little tray underneath that's to catch any sort of powders which fall off. And what that means is it allows me to also mix in a little bit of rust with a little bit of the, the black soot and just sort of add a bit of extra tonal variation to the weathering powders. It's very much like mixing colours of paint. And now once we've finished, another coat of varnish on the top to seal in all the weathering powders. This will also sort of dull down some of the brightness of the, the rusty effect. But what this means is that the, the weathering powders will stay where they're supposed to. They uh, won't get dislodged as we're handling the model. And then we just let that to dry. And... Here it is on the layout. If you would like this video, please click the like button. Don't forget to comment as well down below if you've got any ideas for weathering. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.